Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel, McNally Money, home of all things stocks, investment, and personal finance related. Today we're talking about a company involved in the sports and media industry based out of Canada named The Score. Now this is a company that's gotten a lot of attention lately and it's run up over 500% in the last six months. In honor of this sports related stock, I've got my jersey on, my signature Caesar, and we're gonna try and set some records here. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so. My goal is to hit 100 subscribers in my first month. And if you haven't already liked this video, please do, as we're trying to set an all-time record, which is currently 25 likes. Without further ado, let's jump right into the video. Nailed it! Okay guys, so as promised, today we're gonna to be talking about Score Media and Gaming. Now this stock trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange. It had a big move here on Friday. It was up nearly 9%, just north of $5 now. And I have a one month chart up here. I wanted to take a trip down memory lane. So if we pull up a one month chart, you can see here uh, early or mid January, I guess we were just over $2. So it's gone up three bucks since then. And if we pull out to a six month, you can see that this was actually under a dollar uh, only back in November. So it's actually gone up five, six X from where it was just a couple of months ago. And that's why I was so excited to talk about this stock. It's run up tremendously in the last few months. There's a lot of news. There's a lot of press around this one. And I thought it was a good opportunity to maybe discuss this in a little bit more detail. So we're going to go through what the score does, kind of its core business, and a couple of the new ventures that it's getting involved with now and that's actually contributing to this run up. And then we'll talk about my personal prediction in terms of price and if I'm going to get involved with this stock or not. Currently, I don't hold any shares in SCORE, uh, but like I said, in terms of trip down memory lane here, this is actually one that I was involved with years and years ago uh, back in university. So probably about 10 years ago now, uh, I was a holder of SCORE. Um, don't even remember how many shares I had at that point in time, but I can tell you it was around 50 cents a share, and I sure wish that I had held them now. And just to show you guys kind of what happened here, if we look at a five-year chart, you can see for the longest time from 2016, really all the way till September of 2020 when it had that big run, it pretty much did nothing, this stock. It traded flat for years and years and years. And it wasn't until they made these shifts that we're going to talk about in today's video that they really accelerated and started to break out of that sub $1 range and have now just taken off tremendously. So the score's primary business and what it did back in the day when I held shares is actually uh, an app or website and they actually had media divisions as well, so TV channels. And they were involved with everything to do with sports content, obviously scores of games, highlights, clips, interviews, athlete stories, stuff like that. So you can see here, this is their actual website. This is kind of their traditional uh, bread and butter business. So up top here, you can see all the different sports that they cover. So everything from kind of the main uh, NFL, NBA, NHL, all the way to some kind of niche sports here. So you can see CFL, obviously this is a Canadian company, so Canadian Football League, different soccer leagues in Europe, and even things like tennis and mixed martial arts. So they really span the board. And speaking as a Canadian, I can tell you guys, this app is an extreme front runner in Canada. It's similar to like a TSN or Sportsnet or something like that in the States. But any of my friends or anyone who's involved with sports, this will be the app that they have on their phone. And that's why for the longest time, I couldn't really figure out why this stock wasn't moving. They had a ton of monthly users, they had a ton of visibility, but they just weren't able to capitalize on ad revenue. And they've actually kind of expanded now into two different areas, uh, one of them being esports and one of them being sports betting. And this is what's allowed them to really springboard and see this stock price appreciate in a rapid fashion here over the last couple of months. So we're going to talk about each of those kind of recent advancements with this company. But before we get into that, I wanted to talk about Score's vision as a company and the leadership team itself. So you can see here on their website, the Score, as they define themselves, creates mobile first sports experiences, connecting fans to what they love through an addictive combination of real-time news, scores, fantasy information, and alerts while creating and curating content that is mobile optimized, comprehensive, customizable, and seamlessly shareable. So they have really found this mobile first niche and that's where they've really spent a lot of their time. You'll see they've actually sold off some of their other media assets to allow them to focus on this digital or media platform. And I think that's honestly a really smart move. 
Uh, this is the way entertainment and content is going. And I think, again, focusing on what you're good at is the way to win in terms of a company performance. Um, so I was happy to see this. Now, if we scroll down the page, you can see the leadership team here is a father-son duo. So it's the Levy family. Uh, John, so the senior, was a media industry entrepreneur in Canada here. So he actually built up a cable business, uh, one of the top 10 largest distributors in Canada. And then he sold that off prior to building the score. So you can see here, they actually serviced nearly 7 million homes, so about 20% of Canada. And then in October of 2012, they sold off their media assets to Rogers. So Rogers is similar to like a Comcast or something like that in the States. They're one of our big media giants here. And then they spun out the score media or digital asset, allowing them to really focus on that mobile digital experience that we talked about just previously on this slide here. Now you can see the score app. Uh, so this is where most people People actually use their service not necessarily the website is one of the most popular sports apps in North America and as mentioned in Canada here I would say it's far and away the best sports related app that I'm aware of now the son Benji so he oversees business development and execution of business strategy and he's been really instrumental in the digital uh, media space so as you can imagine he's a little more tech savvy a uh, little more maybe millennial focused and he's really pushed his dad and the rest of this company to get involved in this media uh, digital space. So I mentioned the two big changes this company has kind of layered into their core business. So on top of the traditional sports business, they've now made a big splash in the esports world. So this one isn't as talked about as maybe the sports betting side of things. But I personally am extremely bullish on esports. I'm a big gamer myself. I'm a Call of Duty fan. I absolutely love video games. And this industry, I think, is set up for massive growth over the next 5-10 years. Obviously, millennials enjoy interacting, communicating, playing online. And I think as games get more and more realistic, and as life gets more and more stressful, people are naturally going to shift to this uh, digital or online kind of mentality and I could see this going extremely mainstream even overcoming traditional sports maybe not necessarily in the next 10 years but maybe in the next 20 30 40 as games continue to become more and more popular so they really focus on a couple of the core games out in the industry right now so League of Legends Dota Counter-Strike Overwatch they have an assortment of fighting games as well and then Battle Royale now, not only does the score advertise, promote, report on this kind of stuff, it actually has an extremely big following on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter as well related to this. So we'll talk about some of the numbers in the presentation deck later in the video. But they've really created a huge sphere of influence here, and they have millions and millions of followers across their platforms. Now, if you take a look at their YouTube page as well, so this is the score eSports on YouTube. You can see here they have over 1.6 million subscribers. I've filtered the videos just by the most watched, and you can see here some of their videos have upwards of 10 million views, and even if you scroll down the page a fair amount here, um, they're still over a million views. So number one, they're getting all the exposure and ad revenue from an extremely successful YouTube channel, but they're also really establishing themselves as one of the core players in this esports world as it starts to evolve and become more mainstream, which I think is very important. And you'll see how this relates to some of their overall numbers in a few slides here. But this is something that I wouldn't forget and I wouldn't lose sight of as this area of sports continues to grow. So the other area the score has really pushed into recently is legal sports betting. So for a long time, and this was actually why I was involved with this company in university, um, I was into the online poker, online sports betting, stuff like that, but you always had to do it through remote websites or offshore websites. Now it's really become more mainstream and legalized in North America. So the score has actually uh, launched in a number of different states across the U.S., both online sports book and they've also got license for cas online casino. So as you can imagine, especially with COVID, with casinos shut down right now, online gambling has absolutely exploded. You can see here legal sports betting is bigger than ever. Obviously COVID has had an impact on major league sports, but they've been pretty resilient and a lot of people are actually looking at this now as their sole form of entertainment. So you can see here, although wagers on Super Bowl were actually down from a dollar value, 37% compared to last year, 
obviously because people can't bet in person. You can see online bets actually were up 63% from 2020. So the shift is really happening and you've seen a lot of companies like DraftKings, PokerStars, stuff like that really take off this year. We'll actually talk about DraftKings market cap in a little bit as it relates to the score. But you can see DraftKings stock themselves is up over 300% in the past 12 months thanks to online betting. So here's our good friend John Levy who we just met a few slides ago and he's talking about how the score is in pole position or a front runner in Canadian sports betting. So widespread Canadian sports betting is not currently legal but the score because of its market penetration and its user base in Canada is going to be the front runner in this industry as soon as they get the green light. So you'll see in the investor deck here I did mention they've already started to roll out on a state by state basis in the US. But Canada is going to be a massive opportunity and massive market here when this really does come to fruition. Obviously Canadians are big on hockey and when we have the opportunity to bet on those games, it's going to be a landslide. Now this article does talk about some of the numbers for the most recent quarter. You'll see these again in the investor presentation deck, so I'm not going to go through them right now. But I did want to point out um, there's two main metrics, I guess, with online gaming. One is handle. This is the amount of money that passes hands or that's bet overall. And then obviously there's gaming revenue, which is uh, the profit or outcome uh, that the score would keep at the end of the day. So there's two distinct numbers here and we need to make sure we differentiate between these. You can see here that there's a lot of promotions and because this industry is so competitive right now with all these various companies trying to gain market share, a lot of different online sports books are actually giving promotions, cash back, deposit bonuses, stuff like that. So I do think that this is going to be a little bit of a slow start. You need to spend money to make money and a lot of these companies are investing very, very heavily in order to get users on their platform and win them away from the competition. Okay, so we've talked about the score overall, kind of the history of the platform, how they started out, now some of the new moves they've made in terms of esports and online betting. So we're going to jump over to their investor presentation deck. This is from Q1 of 2021. So this one actually came out, I think, on January 13th, and it's very recent. We're going to jump in here. We maybe won't spend a lot of time on each slide, but I think there's a lot of valuable content in here. You guys know I love investor presentations. So let's take a look at some of these numbers, and then we'll talk about their market cap, upside potential, and if I'm going to be opening a position in this company myself. So to kick off, they have some high-level bullet points about Q1. So you can see here it's their best ever quarter for gaming handle and media revenue. So here's this term handle again, and essentially that's the flow through or exchange of money as it relates to sports betting. Media revenue is also up, and obviously as more people are going to their platform, sports are starting to resume, and people are starting to make bets on there. They can advertise and they can promote companies on there, which is going to drive media revenue as well. The other thing worth noting on here, and we'll talk about the actual news release itself, is they closed a bot deal at an average price of $1.40 here just recently in December for $46 million. So they do have a good amount of cash on hand, which they're going to be using to fund growth and expansion in both the U.S. in terms of additional states and Canada overall. Another point worth talking about on this slide is the last one here about the U.S. stock exchange listing. They've actually just recently uplisted from the TSX Venture, so Canada's kind of venture or junior exchange to the full Toronto Stock Exchange. And this company is eyeing a US listing as well, which will give them additional access to capital and notoriety within the investment community. So now we get into a little bit more detail in terms of handle revenue, which is up 535% year over year and just short of 56 million for Q1 or the three month period. So that's a lot of money changing hands through their app, which is phenomenal. But you'll see in a second here, they actually recorded a net loss for the period. And that's a direct result of all those promotions and incentives they're offering customers to come over to this platform. So they also kicked off the quarter by launching ScoreBet in Colorado, Indiana, and are on track to launch in Iowa as well. So you can see the states are quickly coming online. And the cool thing about ScoreBet is it actually works between states. So the user interface experience betting app, it's consistent as you travel throughout the United States. And customers don't have to use different platforms, websites, apps as they travel around the country.
So this slide discusses the Canadian opportunity. You can see here Trudeau government is moving to legalize sports betting across Canada. You can see here Ontario, which is our most populated province, actually stacks up pretty high compared to some of the bigger states in the U.S. And in terms of penetration in Canada, you can see here the score has two times the active monthly users of TSN, which is in second place, and over eight times the monthly active users of Sportsnet. So as we talked about previously, the scores market penetration in Canada is unrivaled, and this really does set them up to be a big front runner as soon as national legalization rolls out. Now they estimate the market potential for online gaming in Canada to be between 4 billion and 5.5 billion in annual gross gaming revenue. So keep this number in mind as we start talking about market cap towards the end of the video here. Now we will touch on this slide real quickly. This one talks about the consideration of US listing. So for those of you who are unaware, these are some of the benefits of listing on the United States Stock Exchange versus the Toronto Stock Exchange. Obviously the population's a lot bigger there. There's a lot more investment firms and activity. So there's a significantly larger pool of capital, um, greater volume, so liquidity, we've talked about in some of the options video, but there's more shares trading hand every day. Obviously population here, so there's more people, which means more retail and institutional investors. And all this additional trading activity and attention ultimately or hopefully will drive market valuation or market cap up for the company as well. So the next couple slides talk about their actual product and content. So this slide talks about the 10.6 million uh, that they disclosed as media revenue in Q1. So you can see here they tagged some big campaigns including NBA, Fox Sports, Audi, Volkswagen, DAZN, uh, which is phenomenal to see. They reported just under 4 million monthly active users and an average user logging in 116 times per month. So you can see that the people using this app are logging in multiple times a day to check scores of games, check bets, stuff like that, which is phenomenal. And this is probably gonna to continue to grow as things start to normalize, people start to go back to sports bars, leagues start to open up, games start to have live fans. And then in terms of their social media presence, we talked about this a little bit in terms of YouTube, but they also have a huge following on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. So between the four platforms, they have 105 million fans in Q1. So the reach or the marketing capability they have at their fingertips is massive and is really important as they start to open up new betting platforms. They have a huge group of customers that they can start targeting, emailing, sending promotions to, things like that. So this slide kind of builds on that social media presence. So you can see here between their platforms, they had over 350 million views for the three month period in Q1, which is phenomenal year over year growth of over 350%. So rapid audience growth and continues to provide new brand activation and content opportunities. So exactly what we talked about when you have access to that many people, it just opens the door in terms of marketing, product launches, product placement. You can see here they talk about YouTube subscribers and on TikTok platform, they actually have over 2.8 million subscribers. Now they have secured some big partnerships this year as well. So Geico, Riot Games and MasterCard. So again, these are Fortune 500 mainstream companies that they're now associated with. So now we're gonna take a look at the overall financials and start to wrap this video up and come to some conclusions here. So you can see here the total revenue for Q1 was 8.5 million versus 9.2 in 2020. So revenue was actually down for the period. However, as we talked about, media revenue was at an all-time high. They're attributing this to strong growth in direct advertising. They talk about gaming handle here. So this is why I wanted to differentiate between gaming handle and gaming revenue. So while the company saw nearly $56 million in handle, their gaming revenue was actually negative 300,000 for the quarter. So you can see here, they talk about promotional costs and fair value adjustments on unsettled bets. But this industry is going to be very competitive and very expensive to break into. A lot of different players are seeing the opportunity with online gambling and they're very hungry to grab user base and make a statement here. So I think this one's going to be very expensive in the near term and it's going to take a lot of front end investment to make a splash here. So when you tie this all together, you can see they actually recorded an EBITDA loss of 9.3 million versus a loss of 4.8 in Q1 of 2020. So they've almost 
doubled their loss for the period and they're talking about additional expenses incurred in connection and expansion of gaming operations so again they're referencing that front-end investment in gaming which I don't see slowing down anytime soon as more and more competitors come into this space so the final bullet point here talks about their cash balance as you guys know cash is king because of that bot deal that they did in December at an average of a dollar forty per share you can see here their cash balance is up nearly 62 63 million dollars they also have nearly 11 million dollars in revolving credit both of which were undrawn as of November 30th. So they have access to 11 million more dollars that they haven't used right now. Okay, so now the golden question, is SCORE still a good buy? And based on everything we've just talked about and learned about this company, am I gonna be investing in it myself? And if so, when and at what price? Now. We talked about their bot deal here in December earlier in the video, but I wanted to point something out here. So they actually sold just about 33 million shares at an average price of $1.40 for $46 million of cash, which is great, and we talked about that. However, this was done in late December. So what this means to me is as of late December, institutional investors were able to get this company at $1.40, which based on my experience with some other companies, generally means that that's the fair value price or very close to it at that point in time. And if we take a look back here at their actual share price in late December, you can see here as of December 31st, they were trading at $1.50. So very close to that $1.40 equity raise. Now since then, so about 45 days later, all of January, half of February, we're now sitting north of $5. So they've actually gone up $4 a share or over 356% in the last 45 days. So this company has been on a major run and they've actually seen a big appreciation in share price since this bot deal in late December. So that's one thing to be aware of. There's no doubt this company has a lot going for it. There's no doubt that I'm very bullish on esports and online gaming. But it is worth noting that they've already seen a massive run up in share price and a lot of these bullish catalysts could already be priced into this stock. Now the other thing I wanted to point out here is the market cap. You can see here it's currently sitting at 2.3 billion. Now I mentioned a few times in the video some of the competition in this space. DraftKings is one of them that's very similar in my mind. They're based around sports betting as opposed to maybe some online casino or poker or something like that. So if we take a look at DraftKings stock price, you can see here they're north of $61 and their market cap is actually just under 24 billion. So they're about 11 to 12 times the size of the score in terms of overall company. Now if we scroll down and look at their revenue here, you can see in the most recent quarter, they actually pulled in $132 million. So what that tells me overall, company value scores about a tenth the size of DraftKings, revenue is about a twelfth. So perhaps DraftKings is a little bit better buy at this point, but realistically they're pretty relative in terms of price to revenue. Now that being said, they could both be overvalued, they could both be undervalued, they could both be fairly valued, but I like to look at that ratio for competitors in the same industry when I'm starting to think about opening a position. Now if we look at DraftKings share price over the last year, you can see this one's run up as well. It's up about 6x from where it was in March. However, in the last six months, it has kind of pulled back and it's trading pretty similar to where it was in October of 2020. So the score has definitely had a more aggressive, a more rapid run up recently. DraftKings has kind of already seen that and now they've started to level off. Now, to add a final layer into this story, our good friend Dave Portnoy, who is very involved with Wall Street Bets, Reddit, investment forums, he just took a large position in the score. I want to say about $2 million plus, and he is very bullish on this company. He's also been involved with Penn Gaming, which is over 10x this last year. He's a very influential guy in terms of social media and millennial investing. So to close out the video, I wanted to give you guys kind of my personal analysis on this stock and whether or not I'm going to be opening a position. Ultimately, I don't think I will be at this point in time for a couple of reasons. I feel like the company has some very strong tailwinds behind them. I think esports and online gaming are both massive areas of growth in the next five to ten years. However, I think the score's share price has ultimately run up and is already representative of a lot of these big catalysts. So I would definitely be buying this name under $2. However, 
currently sitting over five bucks. I can't justify this price. Now seeing what's happened with some of these stocks like GameStop, AMC, stuff like that. Once people like Wall Street Bets, Reddit, Dave Portnoy get their hands on these things, they can run at an unprecedented scale. So I'm not saying that this is a bad investment. I'm not saying this stock won't go up to 10, 15, 20, 25 dollars. It very well could. But for my style of investment, which is longer term kind of value fundamental investing, I don't necessarily think this stock at this point in time fits with my investment strategy. So for these reasons, I'm not going to be opening a position in the score currently. I am going to continue to watch this stock. If we see a pullback to maybe the high twos or low three range, I definitely may start to look at this. We'll continue to watch as they open up states, what the Canadian legislation does here in the coming months. But at this point in time, I feel like this stock has already ran a little bit and is poised for a potential pullback in the short term. Now that being said, I could be completely wrong with this one, but at this point in time, I'm going to sit on the sidelines and watch, keep my money invested with some of my current holdings that I feel like have a little bit more stability. This is definitely a speculative stock and as you guys can see they're just in the infancy stage or starting to scratch the surface of some of these big new markets. So that's it for today's video you guys. I hope you learned a little bit about Score Media and Gaming. It was great for me to relook at this company that I held so long ago. Please take a second to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and have a great rest of your day.